Okay, welcome back to the parable of the wedding feast in Matthew chapter 22. We have just been posing the question in our minds, why is the king, after just openly inviting everybody into the wedding feast, after the rejection of the original uh, invitees, why now does he look over the crowd and he sees a man who's not dressed in wedding clothes and then he gets upset about that and, and uh, kicks the man out of the wedding feast? Worse than that, he kicks him out to where there's, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is more than just you know being put out on the street. Uh, obviously, that's a reference to hell. This man didn't get into the kingdom of heaven. At least he didn't get into the kingdom of heaven permanently. Now, first things first, uh, I, I, I'm trying to help uh, all of us to better understand how to interpret the word of God or any parable for that matter. Don't take this detail and then build a doctrine and say some people will get into heaven and actually be eating at the marriage feast of the lamb, but then they'll be cast into hell. Okay, why, why shouldn't you believe that doctrine? Because that's what happened here. The guy was in the wedding feast, then he was kicked out. Why shouldn't you make a doctrine out of that? Because it doesn't harmonize with the rest of the Bible. Okay, and so let's not go too far. But we, you know, we can, t we can find warrant in the whole idea of uh, everybody being invited. The, the invitation of the gospel goes out to the whole world, whosoever will. So that uh, you know, uh, c should cause uh, anyone who believes that salvation is a sovereign selection of God and that some are predestined to be saved and some are predestined to be damned. That has nothing to do with anyone's choice. Look at this parable amongst other parables. This parable doesn't say that. It says the invitation went out to everybody. Okay, now we, have, we come to this, this place where the, the man is caught without wedding clothes. Well, here's a little bit of historical information that helps us, and that is this, that uh, the guy uh, are in, in, in Christ's day, uh, wealthy people provided wedding robes for the attendees to the weddings and the banquets. And so, you know, this was offensive to the king, obviously. And uh, what does it symbolize? The man didn't have what the king uh, offered him freely to clothe himself, to cover himself, okay? And I'm looking for, you know, some scriptural warrant here. How, how what, what, that detail. What, how can we make that fit the rest of the Bible, okay, without digging up something crazy? Well, we know that uh, when we believe in Jesus, all of our sins are forgiven because of God's grace and mercy. And we know that the book of Revelation talks about robes of righteousness and the white robes of the saints and so forth. And, and uh, you know, I think that it's be safe to say that uh, this man wasn't coming to the wedding. He, it's all very safe to say he didn't meet the conditions of the king, right? Right, okay, because the king set the conditions. But specifically, what were those conditions? What harmonizes with the rest of Scripture? The only thing that I can think of is that he didn't you know, meet the condition of repentance and faith in Jesus and therefore have his sins wiped away in, in a larger spiritual context and was born again. Okay, and uh, the end of the story here, if you'll read uh, in verse number 14, the Lord says, for many are called, or some translations will say, many are invited. Well, you, is, is that true in this parable? Well, sure, I mean, everybody was invited. They went to the highways and the Bibles. Many are invited, but few are chosen, all right? Now, that's a little bit vague, but at bare minimum, it tells us this. It's not this, uh, just, just because you're invited doesn't mean you're guaranteed a place. Okay, you have to meet conditions. I, I don't know why this detail was added to the parable by Jesus, but I can only guess that perhaps it was because had he not added this detail, someone might have thought, many might have, wrongly thought, oh, well, uh, the rejection uh, of the original uh, you know, invitees, that represents the Jews, and then the invitation not to everybody, and so everybody who's not Jews, Jewish is automatically saved. We're all in. We're all saved. You know, there's no conditions to be met. There's no expectations by the king. If we're invited, 
we got it. Well, that wouldn't harmonize with the rest of the Bible. It wouldn't harmonize with the gospel that you and I know, would it? No, it wouldn't at all. And so perhaps this detail was added so that no one mistakenly thinks that, that all you need is an invitation. No, you need an invitation and you need to be chosen. And how are you chosen? You are chosen if you meet the condition of the king. And more specifically, what might that condition be? It could be that you have to have the robes of righteousness. You have to be cleansed by the king and look pure and white. Can we kind of finish this out by looking in Revelation chapter 7, around verse number 9, John sees this great multitude of people. No one can count them from every nation, all tribes and people and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and, and palm branches were in their hands. So, you know, here's some symbolism going on. And uh, one of the elders asked John, who are these people? John says, well, you know. And uh, so then the angel responds and says, these are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. And then there's this great crescendo of praise, hallelujah for the Lord our God, the almighty reigns and sounds uh, and of uh, mighty peals of thunder we read about in verse number six. And uh, verse number seven of Revelation 19. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and her, his bride has made herself ready. And it was given to her to clothe herself in fine linen, bright and clean. Listen, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And so if we're gonna go by this, the white robe here represents the righteous acts of the saints. So there has to be holiness, holiness that is born of faith that comes because of God's grace. I enjoyed it so much being with you today. Can't wait till next time. And uh, so I'll see you next time. God bless. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.